Come on, let's get our hands together. Here in your light we find what makes us come alive. A sacrifice of praise. A city on a hill, surrender to you will. Your glory on display. Your glory on display. kids we're gonna take this opportunity to worship Jesus lift your hands let's sing this together I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me
I'm so excited for Father's Day. I love it. I love it. I love it. How many of you guys love your dads? I know you do. If there's any dads in the room, happy Father's Day to you. We love you so much and appreciate all that you do to guide our lives and guide our children's lives. So today, I hope you're, you are celebrating dad. I hope you've done something really nice and great for him. Hopefully you didn't rub his feet with weird things like we told you to do or Mr. Christian told you to do for Mother's Day. So don't do that. Go have fun with dad. Tell him you love him. But we are going to get into our week three series now, um, uh, talking about what's love got to do with it. We're talking about love today. Today is the one that's going to make you guys all squirm a little. It's our romantic love day. <laughs> I know you're excited for it. This is going to be really fun, though. We're going to get some good advice on how to do all this romantic love kind of stuff. So we're ready to go. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Okay, I need you up on your feet. We're off to do our memory verse first. Hey kids, it's Mr. T and he's here to go tell you about the memory verse. It's Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else and everything you do flows from it. All right, you already know how we're going to be doing. So hope you guys have the end. You guys are ready? You guys are ready? Let's go call Mr. Beatbox. Let's go. Mr. Beatbox, Mr. Beatbox. Woo! Money! Yeah! Let's go! All right, you guys ready for this? Come on! Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, and everything you do flows from it. Nailed yeah, it! Come on. All right, I'll let you guys practice, and I'll be back. Woo! Beatbox out! Bam! Woo! All right, let's go learn this dance, all right, kids? You know what we do. So we're gonna start on the right side, all right? So you, you, everyone loves Kung Fu Panda, right? So we're just gonna be punching and bringing your knee up. So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna get your right arm and, and left knee. It's very confusing, but it's all right. Look at Mr. TJ. So guard your heart. Two more times. Guard your heart. Last time. Guard your heart. Moving on, all right? So from the top, guard your heart. And you're gonna point at your face and you're going to nod twice, all right? While moving this way. So let's see that, all right? Above all else, because we're pointing up and it says above, why not? Take it from the top, ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Guard your heart above all else, all right? Moving on. I know you guys got this. Let's go, here we go. And then you're going to scoop from your right side to your left side, all right? So let's put that together, come on now. Kung Fu Panda. Let's go. Guard your heart above all else. Everything you do after this, we're gonna move on. I know it's fast, but I believe in you guys. Yeah, you guys are still with me? Let me hear it. Yeah, Mr. TJ. Cool. All right, so right after here, everything you do, and you're, you're gonna put your, your hands in fists, uh, flows through it. So it's just a punch, punch. Don't punch your, 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 your hands, that kind of hurts. Yeah, it does. All right, so we'll do it from the top, all right, guys? Kung Fu Panda, I know you're gonna be thinking about that. Four, Proverbs 4.23. Let's, let me hear. 
Proverbs 4, 23. Remember that. I think your parents actually asked you that. Come on, here we go. Five, six, seven. Guard your heart above all else, and everything you do flows from it. Two more times. Five, six, seven, eight. Guard your heart above all else, and everything you do flows from it, from the top. Last time, guys, here we go. Proverbs 4, 23 says, guard your heart above all else, and everything you do flows from it. I think you guys are ready. Come on, my valedictorians out there of dance. Let's go call Mr. Beatbox, all right? Mr. Beatbox, Mr. Beatbox. Let's go, come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Proverbs 4, 23 says, guard your heart above all else, and everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4, 23 says, guard your heart above all else, and everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4, 23 says, Guard your heart above all else, and everything you do flows from it. Break it down. All right, you guys, practice is at home, and we will see you next week to do it again. Come on. Hello, friends, it is I, Christian Waples, the one that they call Christian Waples. So we are in our series of uh, uh, what's love got to do, got to do with it, where we are breaking down what love looks like in today's culture, but what it looked like back when the Bible was written and why it used to have a lot of meaning, the word love, but now it's kind of like fizzled out. So what we're doing is we're breaking down different things. We talked about a couple weeks ago, or maybe a few weeks ago, we talked about um, storge, the family love. It's the love that's, that binds you through blood and through being familiar with someone, living with them. And then we talked about phileo and philia, which is the love that um, its origin, you can actually place when it started. It's based off of commonality or it's based off of like being shoulder to shoulder and like an, an emotional um, buy-in with somebody. So today we're talking about Eros and Eros is what we call the romantic love. Um, so this romantic love actually has a proper place, which we'll discuss later, but I wanna to talk to you about what Eros looks like. So Eros is this like, it's this passion and what it's depicted like is the way that Jesus loves his church. Is he always, he wants his church, he wants his bride. It's the way a husband loves his wife and the way a wife loves her husband. It's this passionate like pursuit of somebody that says, I desire that person, I desire the beloved more than anything. Eros, if it could have one sentence, um, it would say, I would prefer to be unhappy with this person than to be happy without them. That's the kind of love that we're talking about. Now, when talking about Eros, it can get a little bit mixed up and a little bit confused with the right way to go about it. Sometimes you don't make the always the, the most logical choice when it comes to Eros. And so I think a good, I think a good explanation of what you need with Eros is probably a little bit of self-control. So maybe we'll see what that looks like. And then we'll talk to Pastor Shauna after that. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Caleb, hey. <clears throat> yes, oh, whew. Whew. No, no, they, they, don't, they don't ever talk to me like that before. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do now. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yes. Whoa, whoa, hey, who are you? Allow me to, to introduce myself. I am Eros. I am the voice of passion in your life. Mm -hmm. Ah, beautiful girl, no? Oh, yeah, I know. She said hi to you, yes? Yes, yeah, she did. That's yes. Awesome. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to walk over to her, grab her face, put your face on her face, and kiss her. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what is happening Who are here? you? Oh. Allow me to introduce myself. I am reasoning, your conscious, if you will. Self-control. I call him boring. Okay. Well, okay. why are Nicknames you both aside. here? Isn't it obvious? We're here to steer your life in the right direction. We're here to steer you in the ways 
of love. No! Your love is so reckless! And your love is so boring. Touché. Okay, so what's the situation? Let's figure this out. Okay, so basically, what happened was we were walking down the hall, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, and there's a beautiful girl. She walks past us, she says hello. We see her, we're like, there's this chemistry, you know? Like, it's like something was pulling us, attracting us to her, right? So basically, she walks by, she says hello, kiss me on the face, and so we were just talking about how, you know, we should go over there and kiss her on the face to show her how much we love her and stuff like that, you know? Got it, got it, okay, so. What do you like about this girl? What do I what do we like? What's not to like? She's got the, you know, she's got the big beautiful eyes and and she's got a nose mm -hmm. with also the eyebrows on the face and she's got the, a mouth that speaks and, and things like that mm -hmm. and yeah. she's got hair, I think. Ah, that's a pretty extensive list. Yeah. Um, What's her name? Uh, Ashley? Damn. I don't like Ashley stuff. So. She, she, um, she could be like a Janet or a Jan Janice. Uh -huh. She wasn't that old. Damn. Gertrude? That, that, she, what? You know Yo. nothing about this woman. You're not in love. What the, what the, that does not mean anything. Look at her, she's a beautiful woman. You're a beautiful man. Go be beautiful together. Oh, come on. Pull yourself together, man. Oh. <sighs> That's it. Hit me one more time, and I'll give you a piece of my mind. One more time? Oh, okay. No, 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 ah. no, 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 no. That's it. Come on, hold still. Hey. Ah. 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 Ow. What the heck? Sorry, love hurts, okay? Got a little carried away, didn't we? <laughs> okay, okay. Ow. I get it now. I Hold on. Okay, I need you. And I need you. What the? Hmm. And I can't have too much of one. So I need both. Okay, okay, I gotta process this. I need y'all to go for like two seconds. Okay, well, if you ever need me, I'm right okay, here. Okay, cool. Ah, oh, well, now he's gone. It's just the two of us. So what do you say? We pick up where we left off, go over there, find oh, the girl, sure. give her our kiss. Yeah. Ah! <sighs> well, that helps. Nice and quiet. I get it now. You gotta have both. It's both self-control and passion, but I have to choose it. Oh, so should I talk to her? All right, welcome to the final session of uh, our talking about Eros love with uh, Pester Shauna. <laughs> so today we are covering marriage, really. You guys so, talk like this the whole time. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> okay, not. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so we obviously are talking about, and we, we've covered what Eros is, that mm -hmm. Eros is this like passionate, Love. Yes. So I want to ask your opinion. So if you don't know, Pastor Shauna is married, has three kids. Mm -hmm. So you have some you have some experience. A little bit. In this. Yes. And Pastor Andre and I have been married for 20 years. 20 years? We're old. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I'm 28. Uh, so it's Oh you, gosh, now I feel really old. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so they got married when I was eight, probably close to your age. So yes. my question for you, Pastor Shauna, mm -hmm. is why, so, so what is Eros meant for? What kind of? Okay, so Eros is the love that's meant for marriage. Yes. So it's the love that lasts forever. It's the love that's more of a choice. It's the love that um, the Bible, uh, the Bible refers to the church as the bride of Christ, of Jesus. Right. So that means Jesus married a church building. No, it doesn't. It means, it means um, that that's how we look at marriage and our love for our husband or our wife is we love them selflessly. We love them no matter what. They're no never going what. away, no matter what. What about when they mess up? Even when they mess up, because mm. we all mess up. 
a lot. <laughs> That's fair. So would you say, what did you say is a good foundation for that kind of love, for, for a marriage? Oh, friendship. Yeah? Yeah, you got to be friends first. So um, as you guys are young, and so it's really important that you guys make friendships. And learn how, which is why we're doing the series. Yes. Like learning how to make friends and what that looks like. Exactly, and there's, there's all these different kinds of love that you're explaining so well. So Eros actually starts in friendship because Eros is the one that stays with you the whole time through marriage. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna be married 20, 40, 50 years, the rest of your life, whatever it is, which is what the Bible tells us we should be, um, then you have to have a friendship and you have to love each other on that level. I like that. Because there'll be times you're gonna get frustrated with your spouse, with your husband or wife. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you guys have seen moms and dads get frustrated with each other. And Never. <laughs> I've gotten frustrated or we've had arguments or disagreements, but you still love each other no matter what. That's just like, you'll love your mom and dad or you'll love your brothers or sisters no matter what. It's the same thing with marriage, but even more intensely. I like that. So I have another question, kind of doubling off of that. Okay. So why do we get married? Like what's okay. the goal for marriage? Okay. And then on top of that, like back in the day, people used to get married because they were arranged marriages and love wasn't necessarily the motivating factor mm -hmm. and they had more successful Success, marriages yes. then. Yes, so we don't do arranged marriages anymore. So if you guys don't know, arranged marriages are when um, a parents pick who you're gonna get married to. So your parents would pick who you are going to get married to and it's arranged and decided without any input from you. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't do that anymore. No one does that really. But um, but it did have success because it was a choice to love. Right. So you got married and that was who you were married to. And it was a choice to stay in that marriage and a choice to love that person and make that marriage good, regardless of how you felt. So would you say that there is, especially in today's culture, that there's probably is some confusion on the difference between the, the, the choosing to love yes. and then the feeling yes. of love? Because everyone, so there's a different kind of love and I don't know if we've talked about this yet, but called Venus. Ah. <laughs> that love is the the love you guys see in cartoons. The the ro the super romantic. Uh, okay, that one. <laughs> that the one of the cartoon characters get hearts on their eyes and like fly around chasing the person they have Venus love for. I'm in love, I'm in love and I don't care who knows it. Yes. That's the love you feel when you see someone who's really cute. And I know you guys do, don't, don't get all mushy on me. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you feel that love, that's temporary. And that's the love that you get married feeling too, but it doesn't, it's not always there. It goes, it might go away, it might come back. You might get frustrated, it might take a break. So it's not there all the time. Whereas um, Eros love is always there. I like that. So would you say that it's a, what, is it a bad thing to, to have that like Venus no. love for somebody? Oh no, it's great. It's fun and it makes you feel good mm -hmm. and it makes you excited and it's good, but it's dangerous too. Is it? Because it's also meant for marriage. Gotcha. So it's meant to lead to marriage. And so the Bible tells us and God tells us through the Bible that we're meant to have one marriage. We're right. meant to marry one person, um, and that's the one marriage we have the rest of our life. That's the goal. Doesn't always happen, but that's mm -hmm. the goal. So if that's our goal, then we feel that we meet that person, and as we're young, we meet all kinds of people we might feel a Venus kind of love for. We might be like, oh, they're cute. They're, I like that boy. He's the most He's beautiful girl I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> yes. So, and that's a good thing if you feel that, that's okay. Um, but the goal with that is marriage. But what happens when you're younger is the enemy wants us to make a big mess mm -hmm. before we go into marriage. So then it messes oh, yeah. up our marriage. So if he, the way he can do that, the best way he can do that is to give you this Venus love for somebody. And you're like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. But then you suddenly feel ashamed. Right. And if you feel ashamed about liking somebody, like you have to hide it and you don't, people shouldn't know. And oh, you would never tell your mom or dad. That's that's when it gets dangerous because that's what the enemy is doing to try to get you to do things in secret. And mm. when you do things in secret, it's never a good thing. The things that you have to hide 
are the things that make a big mess when you're, as you get older and in your current life too. And so the enemy tries to get us to hide it all so that as you go, you've been, made this mess and then you have to walk into your marriage with that one person telling them all this mess that you made or they eventually will find out mm -hmm. and you don't want to have to do that. So as soon as you start to feel that, that bit of shame or thinking I have to hide this or right. I wouldn't tell anybody this or I certainly wouldn't tell my mom this or my dad that, then that's when you know, okay, I'm, it's okay that I feel it, but I shouldn't hide it. So I have, to, I can't act on it. Mm -hmm. And that means you're not quite ready to get married, and which are, of course they're not ready. <laughs> right. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> are those probably good things to, to talk with mom and dad about? Like, Oh yeah, totally. Hey, I feel this way about yeah. this person. Like, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. Am I okay? Am I, am I old enough or like mature enough to mm -hmm. date? Which I didn't date until I was like, at eight, nineteen, nineteen, I think eighteen Good. or nineteen. Yeah. And I, like, I waited that long, and it's been ten years, and I still, I don't necessarily, much, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't date much. And that's a good thing though, because then you're being selective, and the Bible says guard your heart. Mm -hmm. It means protect yourself. So you might have this Venus feeling love for all kinds of people. Um, but if you guard your heart, it means you're not acting on that love. You're right. not acting on that feeling that's going to go away so that one day when you have that feeling for the right person and you also have that Eros love that is selfless and I'm going to, I would give anything for this person. That and passionate love Yes, for it's that love that I just want them to be happy, even if I'm not. Like it, whatever I can do to make them happy and serve them and love them, that's that love that you, the, is the goal because that's the one you'll keep feeling the rest of your life. I like that. That's Just beautiful. Protect your heart. I like that. So if you give one piece of advice for all of these people watching, <laughs> everyone from the ages six to t to eleven, eleven or twelve, yeah, or twelve, <laughs> one piece of advice mm -hmm. in regards to what we just talked about. Okay. What would it be? Um. I would say make sure you are open. The Bible talks to us about having a multitude of counsel, mm -hmm. meaning we have, we should have all kinds of people that give us wisdom and help us to make good decisions and do the right thing. So if you can be open about your feelings for boys or girls or anything like that, dating, if you can be open about it with multiple people, your mom, your dad, maybe some of your teachers in class right now, um, maybe some um, other counselors or people that um, are in your life that are adults, then that's helpful to say, I think I like this boy or I like this girl. And they can say, okay, and they can help you make good decisions. Smart. We always need someone to help us guard our heart. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Shana. You're welcome. All right, so today, uh, obviously, we've covered uh, Eros and Venus in talking about love and things like that. So this has been uh, what's love got to do with it? With it, sorry, I messed up the accent. What's <laughs> what's what's love? What's love got to do with it? On I don't know what that accent is. On now. awakening kids and videos. Oh gosh, I messed it up. Go to Australia now. We love right. you guys. Bye we'll guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>